You guys, this episode is gonna be amazing. Location-wise, what yeah. are the most profitable and what are the least profitable in your experience to date? What's the top seller? We serve roughly 120 to 140 people in two hours. What's your goal to grow that revenue? Anything for 2020 or 2021? You're losing customers and you know, so you just gotta go to town. If it ain't profitable, don't come back. Location-wise, what yeah. are the most profitable and what are the most least profitable in your experience to date? Okay, so that's, this. it's actually the same answer. Okay. Um, festivals. Uh, most profitable. Both, both. So I know, that's what I'm saying, it's wild. So one festival, like we did, we served 900 people in a day. And so we, you know, we went back the next day and then, or uh, the next year and, uh, they added 20, 30 food trucks and, oh, yeah. you know, so and it's like, oh man, we, we just slammed it. We, we have all this food ready. We have, you know, pounds and pounds of steak just ready to go. Cause we, the last year we had a line of 200 people the entire day. Wow. I mean, I don't know who would say it in a lot of two. Yeah. yeah I, was like, I don't know. I this. don't know why you'd ever do that, but they did. And it, it was, was good. It was, it felt awesome for us. But then the next year it was like, oh man, we're doing nothing. You just don't know with festivals. Like, you know, they promised 2000 people. Well, it might be 2,000 people on the road right there and we're parked right here mm -hmm. and not a single person stops by. We've, right. we've actually had that happen. So it's just... So the answer is festivals and festivals. Festivals and could festivals. Could be profitable, most it's, profitable, could be least profitable. I know, it's, 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 it's wild, but it, it really is the, the, uh, the complete opposite ends of the spectrum. What about your daily sales volume? What, what, how much does each customer tend to spend with you yeah. per visit? Yeah, so um, obviously location because we move around. Yes. And is it location specific? So absolutely, yeah, clearly. absolutely. So we have kind of our, our big deal right now is Boeing. Uh, so we pull up to the, the facility and we serve roughly 120 to 140 people in two hours. Um, so it's just... As That's, fast as you can yeah. put out burritos, it's... That's like it's, military plus some... Oh, man, it's it's no joke. You gotta you're, have everything ready to go. You're throwing burritos out the window, <laughs> literally. Here uh, you go! Yeah, because they, yeah, they only have a half hour to eat. Oh, so, I see. So if they're lying, you're losing customers, and, you know, so you gotta... You just gotta go to town. But so, location is huge, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. And again, that's the point of the food truck. Get up and leave, you know, obviously finish your day, but if it ain't profitable, don't come back. So, that makes sense. which is hard because it does take a little while. You know, you start to kind of feel it out and, hey man, I served 60 people here on the first day. Well, the first day, that's pretty good, you know? And then the next time you might get 65 and next thing you know, you've built up enough of a reputation, people are chatting and mm -hmm. you're serving 120 people, which is, you know, a good day. What are they spending per customer? So our normal price is $12, okay. but our average sale is 18.50, I think. So Again, normally- a pop or a couple yeah, extra Yeah, a pop or we get a lot of double orders and, you know, triples or especially at Boeing, somebody will buy for their whole entire little team. So five, six orders. Okay. How did you get the Boeing location? Oh, well, I think it was all about building up a reputation. Uh, we won the kind of the, the biggest reward around here is the, the best of uh, Western Washington is called. So a, a Good local, for you. yeah. Congrats, man. That's yeah, awesome. It, was, it, must be it was insane. I mean, our business just went from kind of, you know, we were doing good to just, you know, a firm straight up and mm -hmm. it was awesome. So next thing we know, um, we're getting these phone calls and one of those phone calls was Boeing and saying, hey guys, you want to come vend at our location? We have basically a small country working here. That's awesome. So yeah, we- How did you feel about that call? Oh, we were, yes, yes, please. So we're next, there. yeah, next thing we know, we're, we're serving Boeing, which is just wild. We love it. What's your goal to grow that revenue? Anything for 2020 or 2021? We would like to get into a restaurant now. Now I feel mm -hmm. like we have a, enough experience under our belt, enough That's following that, yeah, I think that it's that time. That will open up a new food truck. So You've survived the first year or yeah. two, which is really the tough time in business, I know, right? I know, it's wild. Uh, you're just, you're learning so much stuff. From our original menu we started with, we have one thing that is on our original menu still to this day. What, what is that? The California burrito. 
It, I it's our, that. Yeah, yeah. That's our only thing. That, you know, you just kind of go, hey, man, this isn't selling, this isn't selling. And next thing you know, we have basically an entire different menu. And, you know, we're at farmer's markets. We're at uh, a bunch of, um, like, Boeing and stuff where it's like, dude, you eat that. You're going to bed, man. Like, I don't care who you are. It's <laughs> That's a lot of food. So, but they, they love it and they keep coming back. Yeah, so. it's that syndrome. When you eat a lot, your stomach... <laughs> bloats up and oh, yeah. it pulls the, the, the skin of your eyes down and you just want to sleep. I know. I, I don't know, know what you call the, that syndrome, the, but, it's, the, but thanks, it's real. Thanksgiving syndrome, how about that? <laughs> you started day one, roller coaster, never easy as it begins. Yeah, yeah. How did you start to get your name out? Yeah. Um, Other than changing locations, did yeah. you use some kind of platform, marketing? Obviously Facebook. We didn't really use Twitter or um, Snapchat. Um, I've just never been a big social media person, so that kind of actually kind of hindered us for a while. Um, but Facebook could was, be a good tool, though. Oh yeah, that's. Yeah. I mean, if you if you have the ability to do it, do it. Mm -hmm. uh, just I was working, you know, 14, 15 hours a day, and my wife. We had two kids when we started, so there wasn't that extra 20 minutes to do that. You know, Instagram, then mm -hmm. switch to Snapchat and all that stuff. So okay. honestly, that just showing up places. You know, okay. all, if you're going to be there, be there. Don't ever cancel. Um, even if you know it's a bad event, um, just build that. They're dependable. If if you hire them to come to your place, they're going to be there. That's important, man. Show up when you said you're going to show sure. up. For sure, yeah. for sure, and stay when you're stay the hours you're going to stay. We we've been to even if it's crickets. Oh yeah, <laughs> you you said you're going to be there, so be there. Yeah. I mean, it sucks, but like we we've been to many places where we see other food trucks pack up and leave, and it's like, what do you? Who do you think they're going to call next time? If you think Who that companies, the yeah, if you think that companies don't talk, you're you're wrong. That's so, so important. Yeah, so and important. be prepared. If you say you're going to do something, do it. You know, like we kind of stand by that 30 second wait time. You know, we can we can whip out a burrito usually in 30 seconds, so we better do that. Let's talk about expansion. What are your yeah. plans for expanding, and what does that look like in the next year or two? Yeah. So before the whole COVID thing, I mean, life's Life's uh, kind of flipped around. Pre-COVID. Uh, yeah, so we were looking at a spot. Then we we're this whole thing. We we're like, oh man, let's 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 wait a second. So yeah. we just now started entering that market again. In fact, we made a call to a Totem Lake area uh, the other day, and wanted to see if you know they had any openings. So talking I, about a new location, new yeah, truck, new, or a new restaurant. New restaurant. So wow. same same kind of concept as the food truck. We like the uh, you know fast service. Uh, big burrito, big servings, just kind of keeping the same menu. Yeah, uh, we'll we'll add a little bit onto it, um, but yeah, that'll that'll definitely be the heart. We, we're not into the the fancy uh, fancy dinner sit down. We, right. we grab and go, kind of the California taco shop idea. California dream. There you go. Yeah, and we could add a fish taco maybe. Ah, those are good. Yeah, they are. What's the top seller? And why? Uh, California burrito by far is our okay. top seller. I, I would say we do 50 to 60% of our orders are California burrito. So mm -hmm. it's it's by far, by far the best. And what's in it? Walk us through real quick. It's super simple. Cheese, uh, we use um, cheddar and uh, Monterey Jack cheese, carne asada, french fries, sour cream. Well, we use crema. It's it's not quite yeah. as sour, it's more nutty. Yeah. That's it, french fries, crinkle cut french fries, and that's it. Sometimes less is keep, more delicious. Just keep it simple, man, right. it works. So. Our uh, number two would be the Philly, um, mm -hmm. and that's just Philly. Right the here. Philly, yeah, yeah. So good. So um, kind of so same thing. Right there, you guys. Cheese. We use uh, aged provolone cheese, um, steak, and then bell pepper, onion. Again, French fries. Got to do that. And then we make our Philly sauce, which is uh, Heinz fifty seven and mm -hmm. crema. We use crema a lot. So. I tried the Philly. Yeah. And it was delicious. Dude, that, good. That yellow sauce. Yeah, that's has the, an incredible kick to it. It's I mean, weird, man. It it works. It's. It, and the it's, base on that that hot sauce? Yeah. The base. Is that mango? You... So it's uh, habaneros, lots and lots of habaneros, carrots, and mangoes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I can still feel it. It's, it's delicious it taste. It burns so good, right? <laughs> it does. <laughs> we normally run two a days, um, back to the old uh, military or, or football. Mm -hmm. uh, we usually do two a days, um, kind of the middle of the week. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays. I so think. we'll we'll At go Boeing to specifically or? no so Boeing uh, will do a double on Tuesday so okay. we'll, we'll feed first shift lunch and second shift lunch which is really kind of more breakfast and 
and dinner because uh, they work really weird hours there. And then we'll go home. It's about, uh, you know, I'd say we work pretty much 14 to 15 hours those days. That's a, and then, that's yeah, a lot of hard work. Yeah. Yeah. And then Wednesdays, we're either at a school or we used to be at a school before this whole uh, COVID thing hit. Mm -hmm. um, now, obviously, schools are shut down. We're at the UW Bothell. That Thursdays impact your business quite a bit. Oh yeah, just yeah. Not having the ability again, to again, thank God for wheels. You right. know, we just kind of find the next spot. Out. I mean, we're parking in neighborhoods now, which is crazy because who would have thought that would have been a thing? So right. it's kind of going back to the roots and why you started a food truck in the first place. So we're enjoying that. Uh, so Thursday nights we go to Karen Brewing in um, Kenmore. Okay. And I would say an average sell there. We like to stay above a thousand bucks. It's pretty close to that thousand, eleven hundred, twelve hundred area. Um, obviously, weather dictates with breweries, mm -hmm. and we have a reputation. We can stick out a burrito in less than thirty seconds. So, okay. Um, normally, people aren't waiting. So, not a sit-down restaurant. Yeah. Elaborate on that a little bit, because you, you, you know, yeah. quick. Uh, burrito, grab, go, delicious. Yeah. Um, so we talked about it on? earlier about uh, employee costs. So I see. every time you're dealing with somebody else, you're dealing with uh, another person to take care of that. So um, we we also just like the idea of the fast service. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? We might do the, uh, like I said, the taco shop idea where you might have four tables, you bus kind of deal. You could sit here, but you're kind of on your own. We're not really walking out there. But That's, that's just, just your preference yeah, and your, yeah. your vision. Yeah, yeah. I like... I just kind of like doing food that way, you know, mm -hmm. just down and dirty and... Uh, so not a it. big, you know, big restaurant with 20, 30 employees yeah. and everyone sitting down. No, that's not no. part of your vision. No, that the... sounds like an absolute nightmare to me. <laughs> I, I I really like the the grab and go, man. It's it's definitely our, our thing. Yeah, we call it lean. We've got a couple episodes with Paul Akers. You yeah. should check it out. Yeah. Uh, guys, the episodes are in the description. Check them out if you haven't seen it already. But yeah, that's basically what I keep thinking about is keeping it lean, keeping it small. Yeah. Uh, and, and focusing on that consistency with the product quality. Well, so yeah, and we can you know we can spend a little bit more money on our on our product instead right. of on on labor. So yep. yeah. big brick and mortar buildings. I which, know. Yeah, the rent. I mean, it's there's so many costs with that, and then insurance. And I mean, it's just next thing you know, it's just holy cow, man! You're you're having to serve three Different times waters. the amount of food to make make the same amount of money. So right. yeah. Not every question is going to be answered in this episode, so we do have a blog, upflip.com forward slash blog, or the description and the link is below. Uh, so please ask more questions. We're here to get them answered uh, from professionals and experienced people like, like Kyle. So uh, Kyle, question about your military experience. How has that prepared you for running this business? What skills and lessons have you learned in the military that you're applying them now? Yeah. Um, well, it's never going to be harder than the military. For you don't, sure. Yeah, you don't have a choice in the military. so. We walk three days without sleep or anything like that. So yeah, the Marines they work you guys. Yeah, they do. Uh, a bit. So it ain't ever gonna get harder than that. Um, team building, obviously. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't matter if you like the person to your left or right in the military. You better get along with them because that's life. So, uh, you know, you learn to deal with employees that are not the best employees, and you you know you learn how to motivate there are those them for sure. Yeah, and you learn how to motivate them a little different and find that uh, that niche that wants to make them work. Well, there you have it, guys, an inspiring story from Kyle and their successful business model. If you guys have any questions, anything about what we've mentioned, if you have more questions, please ask below, engage us, hit that bell so you don't miss any videos from Upflip, and we're here for you. We've got some awesome content coming up. Have an awesome day.